So I've got um, a 50mm setting on my trusty old recycled feeder gauges. Uh, I'm just going to true this up and turn a turn on the bottom. Spin it up to about 1200 revs. It's not too out of whack. Just some. and then put a tenon on it. Just doing a pull cut. A mark on approximately where I think it is and then check it out this has got no points on this particular one so it's nice and safe for doing this sort of thing so there we have it got about a 5mm tenon, that's about all we need for a small bowl like this. sanding seed on the outside and then I'm going to put some super glue and some sawdust in those holes. So I've uh, put some sanding seed on this, uh, the intention of that being to protect the uh, cut of the wood from staining when I'm using super glue. Um, the holes are actually quite significant which is a bit of a pain, I hadn't planned on having to fiddle about with it like this. Uh, but I'm going to put some um, thin CA glue on uh, to start with. If I can get it out the uh, out the bottle, uh, just to soak into the existing sawdust from the worm holes and stabilise those.
this is an oldish piece of 120 grit. Um, I'm just going to go and sand, and it clags up the uh, sandpaper. But you push the stuff into the holes whilst it's still wet. Okay, okay I've uh, put it on the on the chuck now and I've filled the holes. I think the uh, uh, dust that I got was a slightly darker colour. So, um, but it discolours anyway with the super glue. So I think I've got a reasonable enough finish, but this outside I think is going to be uh, painted as well as the uh, the body over here. So I just thought I'd show you that. It's quite effective. Well, the bowl centre is going to be somewhere around here, so I should just take a bit out. Okay, I'll uh, now I've got to sand and prep the top, uh, ready for whatever finish I'm going to put on it. So. Right, so I've uh, sanded it, filled it again, and uh, sanded it back, and uh, also put um, chestnut uh, sanding sealer diluted back on it again, so it's nice and smooth, and I'm now going to be able to um, spray it up, I think. Let's see where we get to. Alright, I've had a bit of a wipe down uh, and um, wiped everything with meths. So I'm going to use some of the ebonising lacquer. I'll keep an old shower curtain around the back of the lathe, uh, which is on a hook. I'm going to spray uh, the outside and the inside. I'm not completely sure which bit I'm going to colour and which bit I'm not going to colour. So. You do end up with a chuck that looks very much like the colour of the last item that you've done. Okay, I've uh, finished the ebonising and I'm now going to uh, take the chuck off and put it on my wood carving um, uh, rig here, which means that I can manipulate the location of the bowl and still leave it on the chuck. Multiple, I think, different manufacturers of the uh, iridescent or 
interference paints. Uh, these are some of the Joe Sonia ones. And they are in multiple colours. And they are called iridescent paints. And the key thing with this and with all of the others is that they are effectively semi-transparent when they are uh, put on and you need a dark stroke black background to be able to highlight the pearlescent iridescent effect. So uh, these are De La Rowney ones uh, and uh, they call these interference paint which means that it's the light passing through them onto the dark background that causes the colours to show up. And chestnut have iridescent paints. Chestnut uh, advise that their paints have got more of a body of colour in them and that in theory you can apply these without it having to be on a completely black background. I'm not sure that I have played enough with them to see if that's the case. Their colours are a little bit more primary in nature, uh, whereas the Joe Sonias and the um, Dada Rowney are more uh, pearlescent. They've got like goldy flecks in them. I'm going to use the Joe Sonia uh, paints uh, and I'm going to use gold, violet, I think. Uh, turquoise and blue iridescent. So I'm going to start off mixing a little bit of the paint. Um, a little goes a long way. I'm going to be using an airbrush by the way. I'm doing a cosmic cloud effect. So uh, that's the blue iridescent. And I'm just going to mix a bit of that up with um, the flow medium. This is the Joe Sonia's flow medium. It basically dilutes the uh, paint without diluting the um, colour. So it's much better than adding water because it's basically the same medium as the uh, original um, paint body. So I'm so just going to put some little bits of colour on and I'm going to spray them around. don't need a lot of the, of the finish, it goes a long way. Hopefully you can see that. The colour comes out where it's thinnest. You can blend it out with the airbrush. You can use a foot pump, a car foot pump, which is what I did the first time round. You'll see that it dries as you go quite quickly because of the air drying it. So you don't really need a lot of paint at all. I'm going to put a bit of the uh, a bit of the blue on now. Uh, I may just swap cameras actually, so that the big picture is the actual um, uh, unit, um, the actual thing. Hold on for a minute. Get in there. I think that's probably better. You probably see that more easily. So I'm now going to do some of the blue. I'm going to try and blend without necessarily going over the top.
careful when it overlaps uh, because you can end up with a, a white edge to it, which I've inadvertently managed to do. A bit of splattering. I've not tried that before. I'm just blowing a bit off. Oh, I like that. I should do a bit more of that. The nice thing is, if you don't like what you've done, you can take it all off again. So I've uh, now finished uh, the first wave of colouring, it's just going to dry uh, fully and the whiteness will start to diminish a little, although I've still got some nasty patches up here that I'm not very happy with, I'll have to see what that's like when it, when it fully dries. I've also done some splattering and what I'm going to do is I'm going to splatter the outside back of the bowl. Uh, as opposed to painting it, so it'll all have a, an appearance of something similar. Uh, so, um, but not not completely cosmic. So, I'm just, all right, I'm just going to use up the rest of the colours uh, that I've got with uh, putting a little bit on the stick. If it's fluid enough, hopefully, still. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that goes. I'll stop the recording and see how that works. Okay, so this is where we are now. I've uh, done that, and this side 
is complete chaos at the moment. The idea is I thought that it looked a bit like nebula and all that sort of stuff. So I've now got to let it dry for a few minutes and then I'm going to regrip it, turn the inside and then uh, put it on button jaws and turn the bottom off so that you can actually see some wood in amongst the colour as well. I may put a little line around the outside edge as well uh, just to sort of define it. But I'm going to turn the centre out first and see how that looks. Right, well it's almost dry but I'm a bit impatient so I'm just going to turn out the centre of the bowl now and see what that looks like. Like with the centre left in for a second, see whether that is a good look. You know, that's not a bad look actually. I think I'm going to leave that in. So, See what that looks like. I think that's quite a nice idea. That just gives it a little bit of it's only a display piece after all. That just gives it a little bit of extra character. Okay, well I changed my mind and decided to actually finish it off. I put a little bit of gold um, paint in the centre, uh, Inca gold metallic metallised paint, uh, and I've just put uh, about four coats of uh, gloss lacquer on the outside. Anyway. Um, that's it, almost done. I'll take some photographs at the end. 